Uh, it's almost time for jockeys up before the 111th Kentucky Derby. There is the favorite, Chief's Crown, trained by Roger Lauren. Remember his father, Lucian Lauren, sent out Riva Ridge and the great secretariat to win this race. Now it just could be Roger's turn at age 49. A quiet spoken man. There the the groom at his head, Eddie Sweat, the man who was the groom for Secretariat, became famous at that time in those years. The crowd still gathered tightly around the wire screen that separates them from the paddock. A look here at Proud Truth, John Beach, John the Bald, as he is sometimes known. He's only 39 years old, looking for a Kentucky Derby win. Proud Truth from Darby Dan Farm, it's the one we talked about earlier with the 87-year-old owner, owner, John Galbraith. Now the jockeys are up there, starting to make their way out to the track. You know, most of our great sports events take place to the tune of stirring martial music or college fight songs. But the Kentucky Derby begins with a song of consolation to a woman far from home. Weep no more, my lady, weep no more today. We'll sing one song from my old Kentucky home, from my old Kentucky home far away. Now today, you're going to hear the words. The crowd will not hear them, but Charlie Fleener, who is the chaplain of the Jefferson County Sheriff's Department here, Police Department, will be singing it just for you so that you can savor every word as the music is played. Why does it grab us? Why does it touch us? Sometimes you wonder. Maybe you've never been to Kentucky, and yet I suspect there'll be a small tear in the corner of your eye when these beautiful creatures come out on the track, the lovely colors of the silks, the beautiful strains of the music. You know, Lafitte Pinkai said a prayer before last year's Derby. He said, Dear Lord, I've never asked you this before, but if you could give me just a little push today, I would really appreciate it. He won the race. Now to Mike Battaglia. Now my old Kentucky home. with the post parade. Program numbers do not conform with post position. The number one horse, Roman Rule, racing out of the third hole, the jockey Jacinto Vasquez, the current odds seven to one. Roman Rule is coupled with number one A, racing out of the fifth hole. That horse is Eternal Prince. Richard Migliori, whom you met earlier, the jockey, and of course, the current odds seven to one. And Eternal Prince is Florida bred, the number two horse Irish fighter, which will be racing out of the first hole. And the jockey is a very excellent jockey, one of the most highly regarded in the land. His name is Pat Day. The current odds, 35 to 1. 
The number three horse is the favorite horse, Chief's Crown. Jockey Don Macbeth up, Roger Lauren, the trainer. You've met them both during the course of this telecast already and the current odds you just saw. Tanks Prospect, the winner of the Arkansas Derby, Gary Stevens, whom you've met. Tanks Prospect racing out of the fourth hole and Tanks Prospect is a good price horse in this race and a contender to be closely watched. Stephen's Odyssey, and you heard Bill Hartack talk about the perspiration. Lafitte Pinkai Jr. up. The current odds, 13 to 1. Woody Stevens, of course, the trainer. At Stephen's Odyssey, the fifth horse out of the sixth hole. Encore Lure, ridden by Ronald Ardouin. Ronald Ardouin, the current odds, 99 to 1. On Calor racing out of the seventh hole. I am the game is the number seven horse racing out of the eighth hole with Daryl McCog the jockey and the current odds 99 to 1. King Leatherberry is the trainer. The number eight horse floating reserve with Sandy Hawley up. Floating reserve with odds at 99 to 1. And then the nine horse spend a buck. And Angel Cordero Jr. up. The current odds only four to one. You heard Angel tell Jack Whitaker how he intends to run the race. The 10 horse in the 11th hole. Proud truth. Jorge Velasquez up. Current odds nine to two. Remember, spend a buck is four to one. The current second choice. Then comes Skywalker with Eddie Delahousse, winner of two of the last three derbies up. The odds 17 to 1 out of the 12th hole, number 11. Fast account on the outside with a marvelous jockey up, Chris McCarron. But the current odds, 90 to 1. He is racing out of the 13th hole. So there you have it. The post parade for the 111th running of the Kentucky Derby will be back. Over the joint, as you have seen. But Bill has done something for us that may be very wise or very foolhardy. He has plotted out, taking five horses in the race, exactly how he thinks this race will be run. Five different points along the race course. And so, let's turn to Bill's analysis of the race, exactly as he sees it, with five horses. Bill, with the boldness of Hartack, give us your pre-race analysis. Well, Howard, um, I believe the speed horses are going to be, the two speed horses are going to be up there early. Eternal Prince and Spend a Buck, I think they're going to make the pace. They've got the speed, they're going to be up there and past the finish line the first time around after they've gone a quarter of a mile. I look for Chief's Crown and Roman Rule coming out of the inside post positions to be laying directly in behind them. They're not concerned about room to run yet because it's early in the race. They want to save ground. Crowd truth at this particular stage, I think, is going to be far back in the race. Okay, Bill, to the start of the backstretch. Well, this clubhouse turn is very important for the leaders. They've already secured the lead. They're going to be concerned with slowing down the pace. They don't want to set a suicidal fraction where they're going to kill each other off. I look for Chiefs Crown to be also saving ground in behind the two leaders. Roman Rule on his outside, thereabouts. And I really think that Vasquez is in a good position right now to, to take advantage of the fact that he's on the outside of... Chief's crown. He's going to try to hold him into a pocket in behind the two leaders. And proud truth. And proud truth at this time. It's still early in the race. He's going to be back there a ways also. All right. Let's go to the end of the backstretch. Going down the backside, the two leaders, I think, are still going to be biding their time. But at this particular stage, as they get down the backside, Chief's crown's going to look not to run by the leaders or to hook them if the pace is fast, but he wants to secure himself a position where he's in the clear. He's going to try to move out from in behind the two leaders and just bide his time around the second turn. Roman Rule at this stage is still going to be, I think the rider is still going to try to hold him in the pocket. I don't know whether he's going to be able to do it or not, but I'd try it if I was there. Proud Truth has made up half the deficit by now. Well, if I'm correct, and I think he's going to come from way out of it, he's got to close up some ground halfway down the backside on the straightaway, pass the horses that are tiring, get himself in a good position also. To the head of the stretch. Well, around the turn, I still look for Eternal Prince and Spendabuck. They've got a lot of ability. I still think they're going to be in there close to the pace, if not on the pace. And if they haven't killed themselves off, they're, they're, they're quality horses. They're still going to be there. Chief's crown, if he secures that position on the outside, he's going to bide his time and, and try to hook the leaders after they turn for home. 
Roman rule at this stage. I don't know what quality he's going to be in. If he's if he's an improving horse and he's got any kind of ability, he's going to be up there with him. Otherwise, he's spin himself out. Proud truth. If he's wound up and he's made his run down the backside and moved up a bit, he's going to be making his run. And depending on whether he's got enough horse to go around or he sees a hole in the inside, he, that's going to dictate to him whether he's going to go the inside or go the outside. So then how do you see it at the finish? Well, Howard, I, uh, I like the two quality horses. I think Chief's crown is going to beat Proud Truth. I think it's going to be a hell of a battle, and I predict Chief's crown to beat Proud Truth. All right, Bill Hartack, why didn't you pick which horse would finish third? Well, the way this race is running with the quality of the horses in it, the speed horses, one of the speed horses might last for third. There's some good closers in this race, and any one of them could make a good challenge at the finish. And I'll tell you, they might not even be that far off the leaders at the finish. I, I wouldn't be a bit surprised if maybe three or four lengths only covered about six or seven of them. What really interests me is your emphasis upon Vasquez aboard Roman Rule. You think that he will race his race to box out Chief's crown, or box him in, as you will. Well, I don't, I don't think he really has to go out of his way. He's got normal speed, he's got good speed, and, and he's got an outside post position on him. So he's really sitting. The post position draw allows him to give himself the, that chance, that opportunity. You realize that uh, you run the risk of being totally in error. Well, I may, I might not ever do it again. What about some of the other horses that come from behind horses, like Tang's Prospect, for instance? Well, if there is a fast pace, then of course it's going to favor the comfort behind horses. I, as a comfort behind horse, I, I think proud rules, uh, proud truth is a quality. But that's not to say that any one of those other uh, uh, closers couldn't get up. They've, they've got impressive wins. I mean, even Skywalker's not out of it. That's true. Now, it's brutally hot out here now, and that track has been baked hard and fast. What impact the heat and the track on a horse that may have a trouble ankle, may repeat, like uh, the uh, Eugene Klein horse. And what about, too, Stefan's Odyssey and the perspiration you mentioned? Well, uh, naturally, a track that's fast and a track that's hard is going to sting a horse if he's not 100%. But then some of those things are rumors, and I don't know if they're true or not. Okay, we will find out soon enough. Quickly, let's go to Jim McKay. All right, they're about to enter the starting gate. There is the favorite, Chief's Crown. You know, his two grandsires, his granddaddies ran the fastest times in the history of the Kentucky Derby. Secretary at 159 and two, Northern Dancer, two minutes flat. Jack Whitaker has joined me here. There they go in, there's Tank's Prospect, Jack. Well, I just feel it's a perfect day. It's what they had in mind when they invented May. We've got a great field, great jockeys. I feel like I did after the first round of the Hagler Hearns fight. This is gonna be something to remember. Number six going in is on Couleur, one of the long shots. There he goes, in now. Another long shot will be going in next. I am the game, the Maryland bred horse of King Leatherbury. Number eight will be floating reserve, another real long shot. Remember, a field of 13, but only 12 saddle cloth numbers. The odds now still changing, but Chief's crown is six to five, strong favorite in the race. There is floating reserve, trained by Joe Manzi. Spend a buck is four to one, second favorite. Five to one is Proud Truth, third favorite in the betting right now. It's almost race time. There goes Proud Truth into the gate, and we go to Mike Battaglia and the Kentucky Derby. And thank you, Jim McKay. There goes Skywalker. We only need fast to count, and we'll be ready for a start in the Kentucky Derby. Chiefs crown the favorite. They're at the post. And they're off. Breaking for the lead from the outside. That's spend a buck. General Prince is off slowly on the inside. Chiefs Clown moves into second. Up from the outside, Ankulur runs the third. From the rail, Irish Fighter is a fourth. Then up from the outside, Skywalker fifth ahead. Eternal Prince sixth. They're moving for the first turn, and Spendabuck has the lead by a length and a half. Chiefs Clown second on the outside. Irish Fighter third ahead. Ankulur fourth ahead. Eternal Prince fifth, a length and a half. Skywalker sixth. Roman Rule is seven, thanks prospect eight by ahead. Floating reserve ninth, I am the game tenth ahead. Then on the outside, fast to count. Gap of two to Proud Truth and the trailer, Stefan's Odyssey. And down the back stretch, spend a buck has quickly opened the lead, has it by six lengths. Chiefs ground second, a length and a half, Irish Fighter third ahead, Eternal Prince fourth. From the rail tanks, prospect is gaining ground fifth. Length further back, that's Ankulur. Then on the outside, Roman Rule. They're moving for the turn. 
and spin the Merck, the leader, by six. Chiefs crown second ahead, Tanks prospect third a half. Irish fighter is still fourth. A length further back, up from the outside, Roman Rule takes it fifth. They're midway through the turn, and spin the Buck leads by five. Chiefs crown second, a length and a half. On the rail, Tanks prospect is a third, up from the inside into fourth. That's past the count. They're moving for the stretch. It's spin a Buck with a five-length lead. Chiefs crown is still second. From the inside, that's fast to count third. Stefan's Odyssey is gaining ground down along the rail fourth. In the final furlong, it's all spin to buck by five. On the inside, that's Stefan's Odyssey with Chiefs crown and fast to count. Nearing the wire, it's spin to buck with the lead. Under spin to buck leads wire to wire to win the derby by four, maybe five lengths. Stefan's Odyssey gets up for second with Chiefs crown third. Running time, two minutes and one-fifth of a second. A big race turned in by Spend the Buck, and as usual, a perfect ride by Angel Cordero. Back to you, Jim McKay. Spend the Buck has just run the third fastest Kentucky Derby in history. Just behind the two great horses, Secretariat and Northern Dancer, Spend the Buck. Is he a super horse? Could he be a triple crown winner? Certainly he could on his performance today. It's seldom that a horse goes wire to wire in the Kentucky Derby. And then that long, long straightaway coming down the stretch, he held on and he had it and had it more. So spend the buck. Number nine from the Hunter Farm of Dennis Diaz has won the Kentucky Derby unofficially, trained by Cam Gambolotti, who has only been a horse trainer for two years, and ridden by Angel Cordero Jr., who has ridden for a lot longer than that. Here they were turning for home. And at this point, it was just a point of focus of everybody's eyes on Spend the Buck. This is a horse who finished third in the Breeders' Cup mile race for two-year-olds last fall in California, but this year has been more spectacular with every race that he has won. In New Jersey, he won by 10 lanes. He won by eight lanes. He came within two-fifths of a second of the world record in his last race before this, the Garden State Stakes. The two horse was beginning to fade. Irish fighter on the outside. Chiefs crown making a belated bid. Number three. And Stefan's Odyssey coming from the rear. Number five. Stefan's Odyssey was in last place. And finally, as you will see, came up to get second place unofficially in the Kentucky Derby. Here comes Spendabuck to the finish line for his 42-year-old owner, Dennis Diaz has only been in this business for two years. There you see Stephens Odyssey going under the wire for second place. And on the outside, as you can see, it's close. But we think it's quite sure that number three, Chiefs Crown, was third in the race, the favorite. So again, the favorite has not won the Kentucky Derby. It's unofficial. We'll be back for presentations for official and prices. Just over two hours flying time from Melbourne, and you are in paradise. Noosa International, the international class resort where you have your own self-contained apartment and two bedrooms, two bathrooms, full kitchen, TV, and video. Everything you could want and more, because we'll even do the work for you. At Noosa International, you don't have to get out of the pool to have a drink. What's more, one of our swimming pools even has stereo music underwater. Noosa International, luxurious hotel-style accommodation, all set in acres of lush tropical gardens. And right outside your front door, all the exciting things Noosa has to offer. Beaches, shops, restaurants, fishing, windsurfing. Then back to Noosa International's famous Pierre's Restaurant for some serious wining and dining. For an affordable international holiday, just over two hours flying time from Melbourne, fabulous Noosa International, where you are in paradise. Cordero Jr. waving to the crowd. The results won't be official until he weighs in. But what a man, what a rider, what an athlete. Spin the buck, Stephens, Odyssey, and Chiefs Crown, the unofficial order of finish. But I think unofficially we should tell you too that Proud Truth has apparently finished fifth. That too unofficial. We mention it because he was third choice after Chiefs Crown and Spend a Buck. 
And looking back, I get a kick before we look at the race and replay out of on hell telling Jack, well, he wasn't sure he'd take the lead. I called him redoubtable. He is one of the great athletes of the world. Yeah, well, I, he had a little bit of help. I mean, I'm not taking anything, anything away from Proud Truth because he had to run that race, and, and he ran it, and he deserved to win. But when Eternal Prince didn't get off real good, it, it, I, I guarantee you that Angel loved it, loved every minute of it, minute of it. He was able to do whatever he wanted to with his horse and not be challenged by another speed horse, and just nobody could get to him. Wasn't it surprising that Eternal Prince was no factor? Well, I, I really didn't see the start real well, but evidently he didn't get off at his best, and when a horse doesn't get off good, then you're stuck trying, you can't rush him up, so you're going to try to save him and hope for the best. Of course, that helped, that helped uh, spend the buck. Well, Spenderbuck maintained the most of that lead on the backstretch. Oh, he There's did. No yeah. closing down on it. No, once he opened up, and he, and he did it fairly easily, he's six lengths in front. At one time, I thought Chief's crown might wind up and slowly start picking him up, but he just couldn't do it. Was there a tactical error by the rider or any other rider that you could see? Uh, not that I could see. A uh, horse getting off bad, that happens to anybody, and, uh, of course, you might get faulted for it or something, but those things happen, unfortunately. And a Roman rule, I didn't think that off really as good as I thought he would no, he either. Did. No, he did. All right, let's take a look at the race and replay right there, Cordero. And here you go, Bill. I was trying to watch about four or five horses in here, but I was really gearing on Chief's crown. He broke well. Roman rule that was on his outer, he didn't get the didn't get the jump leaving there. Now as I come to the wire the first time around, Eternal Princes hadn't got off good. He's back there in about fifth or sixth position. He's in about fifth position right now in the dark colors. Cordero has taken the lead, and of course, like I said, without the other speed horse in there, he just was kind of coasting along. I imagine that Macbeth sees that opportunity. He realized what had happened, and he just wants to settle in there in second in second place. But Spenderbuck got a nice lead with his natural speed, and Macbeth was just stuck hoping that whenever he got ready to make his run, that he could pick him up, which that didn't Spend materialize. Spenderbuck would come back to him, but look, Spenderbuck keeps getting that lead, holding it, building it, building it, building it. There they are in the back straight. Right. Chiefs well, ground second. Once he built up that six-length lead, he just sat there and just was coasting the best he could on him. And Macbeth, I imagine at this time, was just wanting to pick him up slow, not losing touch with him, but he just, he evidently wasn't good enough to pick him up. Now, as I look down the back side, uh, Proud Truth was way back, only had one horse beat, and I think Stefan's Odyssey was well back also. And now Chiefs now, ground second, Tanks Prospect third at this point. Once Tanks Prospect ran up on, uh, ran up next to uh, Chiefs Crown, he was putting his run in, but Chiefs Crown held him away, pulled away from him to be securely in second place and taken out after the leader. At this time, on the extreme outside, I believe that is, that's Proud Truth making his run. He chose to go the outside. He must have had enough, uh, thought he had enough horse, or was, or was forced to go the outside. Stefan's Odyssey right now clear down on a rail in about third or fourth position, right flat down on a rail. He cut the corner. He he really had all the best of his. Not only that. A great move by Lafitte Pinkai, cutting oh. back to the inside, spotting the opening along the rail, and coming from way back, dead last to second. That's true. Uh, he, if he had to go around, chances are he wouldn't have been second. And on Hill Cordero Jr. will be leaving this racetrack in just a very few minutes. He has to ride at Garden State tonight. What an ovation he'll get. We'll be right back. Spenderbuck has won the Kentucky Derby, paying 1020, 540, and 340. Second, Stephens Odyssey, 1020 and five dollars, and third, Chiefs Crown, the favorite, paying two dollars and eighty cents on a fast track in the time of two minutes, one fifth of a second, which again was the third fastest Kentucky Derby in history. The only horses ever to run faster than Spenderbuck were the Great Secretariat and Northern Dancer, the greatest sire of all time. So that's pretty good. The official order of finish now: Spenderbuck, Stephens Odyssey, Chiefs Crown. Then fast account, Proud Truth was fifth. Skywalker, Tanks prospect and the rest here floating reserve Roman rule didn't do it today at all on couleur Irish fighter eternal prince the early speed horse and I am the game so that is the official way they finished I'm standing now with the new president of Churchill Downs Tom Meeker presiding over his first Kentucky Derby Tom you have brought us glorious weather a marvelous race 
and you've just done a, a great job. We thank you for your cooperation, too. Well, it was a great race. I, I can't tell you how excited I am to be here today. Number one is President of Churchill Downs, but number two is a spectator to see such a fine race. And I hope everyone, uh, certainly in this great country, uh, appreciates the finest in racing today. Your wife, Carol, is here. Pretty, pretty good debut for the Meekers today. I loved every minute of it. With us also is our doctor and governor, Governor Martha Lane Collins, and here comes the winners. Their owner, Dennis Diaz, and his one-and-a-half-year-old son. Dennis, congratulations. Thank you very much, sir. We appreciate that. Congratulations. My husband, Dr. Bill. How are you, sir? So nice to meet you. You'll have to excuse me. I'm a little nervous. <laughs> What's the little guy's name? Elliot. Elliot Hunter. Elliot Hunter. Elliot, one day you'll remember all this. <laughs> sure glad that you made it here. Dennis, your grandfather was an immigrant to this country. You made your own way. You were able to retire at the age of 38, and after two years in the racing business, you won the Kentucky Derby. Do all those things together say anything to you? Oh, I'll tell you what. It, we're just so happy. The only advice that I can give to everybody right now is try to retire at 38. <laughs> <laughs> Cam Gambalotti, would you come in for a minute? Here is a young man from the state of Connecticut who's only been a horse trainer for, what, two years? Well, a year and a half. Oh, a year and a half. And you, and this horse is your first stakes winner. He has now won the greatest race in the world. Comment? I can't believe it. What do you want me to tell you? I really can't believe it. It's a miracle come true. I must ask both of you a question, however. The Preakness is the next great classic race. Nine days after that is the Jersey Derby. You get a $2 million bonus if you win the Jersey Derby. Where are you going to go? Can you run in both of them? No, we can't run in both. There's no way we're going to run in both. We'll just watch and make sure he cools out all right and see how he comes out of this race. And tomorrow, the next day, we'll make our decision. But, you know, right now, we want to just rest on this right here and enjoy it. Dennis, can you tur turn down a chance at the Triple Crown? Well, we just take it one race at a time. You know, again, we've told everybody for two weeks now that we'll make a decision after the race, and uh, we're going to stick to that. We want to talk to Angel, see what he feels, see what how he feels the race went, and uh, we'll make the decision probably tomorrow. Let's find out what Angel might feel right now. Jack Whitaker has him. All right, Angel, you stole another one. Well, it's a great horse, and a good horse always make everybody look good. He run real big. Why did you tell me that before the race today, that you didn't know what was going to happen? Well, I didn't think uh, uh, Tenor Prix was going to be that far back. Uh, we, we got a game plan planned up. We didn't want to fight with anybody. He make it easily, and he was going all the way. He could have run two miles in front of the horses today. It was a marvelous Kentucky Derby, your third...